Any when. If I lose it all, it all, I will never look away. This time Aaron, but shirtless. Scarf. Tree. <laughs> One thing I think this opening makes clear is that the rumbling is gonna happen. <laughs> like, it's called the rumbling and Aaron's on the wall doing a rumbling. There he goes. The question is, what does it mean for the world? What does it mean for the various factions? And what does it mean for Aaron? Two brothers. This is gonna be good. Seek took one of the neck. Not having such a good time now, are you, Elena? Aaron is slowly, very slowly ambling towards Zeke. And what happens when he gets there? This guy, the heart this guy has, he just, he never gives up. He has taken so many beatings and continues to take beatings and continues to take beatings. <laughs> wow, 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 okay. Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, Duck Titan, or Cannon Titan, just single-handedly shifting the tides of the entire battle with the help of a few Marlians. And Fleesh Fleish. <laughs> Damn, she's just incredible. There's just so much going on. Wasn't it Reiner who was talking about the need for hand-to-hand -hand combat? You never know. You never know what to expect. I don't think anyone could have expected this. This music, though. Elena just taking it all in, silently reflecting. I mean, speaking of beatings, Zeke's taking a few of his own. Touch flashback? Right. Right, Marcel was protecting Porco, but here we are anyway. And Zeke being alive carries such a huge threat. Oh no. Levi! Oh, where is Levi? Get out of the Get out of the river and Oh no. I don't think this is gonna be it though. I don't think this is gonna be it. This is such a big moment for Zeke, but I have a really bad feeling about this. Uh, uh, no. Oh my god! Uh, not. Oh my god! Oh, uh, how many, how many people? <gasps> no, no. That one drop, the Pixis. How many people did we just lose? How many people did we just lose? How many characters? Oh my god. Oh my god, I didn't think it would happen. Ah, uh, Levi. Levi's gamble did not pay off. Oh, that's heart wrenching. I can't believe what I just saw. A lot of times in shows, there are these loaded guns and that creates the tension, but very few shows, I think, actually fire that gun, if you know what I mean. And also, there was a question of whether that one drop was sufficient. It was, it was sufficient. Gabby was doing so well, and there was this whole love confession, and now I'm not so sure we're out of the woods with her. And then, you know, on top of that, there's also the small detail of, like, every other character just being annihilated, including Pixis. Oh, God, if I didn't, if I didn't already just, like, seek enough. <laughs> In a show where it's hard to know where to root for, at least I can eliminate Zeke. <laughs> He's just the epitome of this ends justify the means type thing, which bothers me on multiple levels. One of them being that I don't even think his plan's going to succeed. So what was it all even for? There's a common idea. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? And anybody who supports my side or my line of thinking gets points. And it's easy to feel some sort of kinship with them. But I think that, as I said before, I would almost rather find someone who's on an opposite viewpoint from me, but has other priorities, you know, something else, something higher than just a side, tethering them to the earth and other people as an ally, than someone who's completely on my side, but has shown that they don't really keep sacred certain values like honesty and integrity and regard for others and empathy, humility, you know, things like that. And so I think this was sort of a long time coming with Zeke. He's one of the examples of a danger of power where there are no more constraints speaking of freedom, but he doesn't have that other thing. This is not out of nowhere, right? He's established that he sees other people as expendable towards a goal that he deems to be the correct goal. So it was sort of only going to go one way. Though I suspect there's going to be a sort of poetic justice that befalls him in the form of fraternal betrayal, let's say. That aside, I feel like the biggest danger right now is Titan Pixis. Titan Pixis is coming for you. Neck Titan. Oh no, runners a fight. Titan Falco. Hang in there, Gabby. 
There's only so long this is gonna work, yeah. Oh, what have you done? We don't have to fight. We don't have to fight. Not yet. Don't give up. Runner just wants to sleep, but... No, no! Hold on a damn minute. <laughs> this guy! Oh, he can... He can live! <gasps> Titan... Jaw Titan Falco. He's gotten so good at this. Yeah, well, that was too easy. They're putting so much trust and faith in Aaron right now. <gasps> oh! My god, what just happened? <laughs> is this real? They didn't just kill Aronoff. I don't think that is what happened. There's another... There's a trick. Or did the show just make good on, on their hint about main character death in season one? Gabby going all the way into the forest. I have such crazy whiplash from <laughs> this first half? Half of the episode. Shall we recap a little bit? Everyone got turned into a titan. Zeke betrayed the children. Falco inherited the jaw titan. Porco died, having never tasted victory once. Elena is meditating. The scout group is fighting Peak, and Gabby shot the main character's head off. I was expecting a little bit more action in season four, but it's acceptable. Acceptable levels of action. Although it's crazy, in a way I'm relieved that Gabby took out Aaron, just because I feel like recently in the show he's really lost his head. Birds. And of course a flashback. Nothing follows up a cliffhanger like a good Attack of Titan flashback. Is this where we learn about why everything that just happened is really okay and not what we think? Ooh. I don't think that was a solid answer. I feel like Zeke sort of read into that what he wanted to hear. Alright. Right. He was never a natural. Zeke is deeply offended to his core. So Eren literally dropped the ball? Is there a metaphor there? People are people, you know, and everyone needs that emotional residence from someone. Even the coldest and cruelest people can probably only make it through those things and, you know, have their lives and continue to live because of the bonds they have with others and therefore the narrative they can create about why they do it, you know? It's for this world I'm creating for myself and these people that I cherish. And I feel like Zeke is putting a lot of that, maybe all of that on Aaron. Man, it's it sucks about the kids and it sucks about all my comrades and it sucks about all the people that just died. But me and my bro are, are gonna make it. Me and my bro are gonna make it and we're gonna love each other and we're gonna play catch. And then Aaron drops the ball. It's so weird because as bad as Zeke is and as much I don't agree with him and find his decisions repulsive, it's so clear that he really is the red swan little child lost and still looking for male figures maybe in his life. He's looking for family and he values that so highly that it doesn't matter what else happens, which makes it almost obvious that Aaron is not on his side. Zeke is just stunned. Stunned. If you can't catch a baseball, do you even deserve to breathe? Birds. Are we back in the present? That explained nothing about the batting. <laughs> that explained nothing. This is the most... Dramatic few milliseconds he caught Aaron's head. Oh! Oh, he, oh, he touched Zeke! And that... Give, gives him the connection, right? What? 
just happened? What is about to happen? He just... Got more powerful, didn't he? This source, this light. He's not looking too good. The coordinate, right? This final act was catch. Whoops! You blew it! <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just blinded by loneliness. Yeah, how about those means now? Right. It's just antithetical to everything he believes in. We're born free. Okay. I'm just busy at the moment. Was it a test? He's still going. <laughs> the sequel does not go away. Ooh, who is using who? Exactly. Oh, wow. Still hanging on. Cliffhanger headbutt. Okay. That totally got me. And not in a good way. I feel robbed. Zeke was not as blinded by that as I thought. I mean, Zeke didn't make it this long by being a fool, right? He's been navigating the complexities of this world and having to have two faces up at all times his entire life. Speaking of, you know, fathers training you for things, he's been playing that game for a very long time. Well, that was certainly an episode of Attack on Titan. <laughs> I'm sort of reeling from that episode. Just so much happened so quickly. However, it turns out, this is obviously going to be a huge turning point with this kind of power. I feel like the sides may shift again. One thing I've been interested in for a while that I think is sort of coming around this season is Gabby's role in the show and its broader themes. And my suspicion for a little while was that Gabby is sort of a symbol for the next iteration of Eren, you know, the continuation of the cycle, but that she would perhaps find a way to break it. And that to me was made somewhat more ambiguous by this episode. And I was thinking that if that's the case, if that's the route they choose to go down where Gabby's different and the world learns, or there's just a next iteration that's a little bit better, would that mean in some sense that Eren did save the world or did contribute to the world, even despite the things he did wrong? And if that's the case, wouldn't that also mean that the sacrifice of all that came before was worth it? You know, there was this big question, this inner conflict that kept coming up through various characters about, was it all worth it? You know, you had the soldier handing the, the mother her dead son's arm and saying they had come away with nothing, right? You had the soldier dying in Levi's arms asking if he had contributed. And at that time, the answer was sort of a resounding no, right? It's like we, we made no progress. But maybe it wasn't that it was meaningless, but that they just didn't have the perspective on it. There's this thing that seems to be a cycle with children in the show. Starting, I guess, for us with Aaron, where Aaron watches the scouts come in and, and gets inspired. And then later, by what I'm sure is not an accident, other kids watching Aaron, Mikasa, and Armin, and them having, I think, a direct conversation about that, about making things better for the next generation. And so maybe that's always been there in the show. You know, maybe the idea of despite Despite the cruelness and chaotic nature of it, despite even wrongdoing, it's not an empty pattern of carnage, right? Each generation takes something away and their sacrifices do not exist in a vacuum. And we've also heard this stated, I think, somewhat directly from the one and only Erwin Smith, who single-handedly, with the help of a few scouts, defeated the strongest military on Earth. And so now it seems, although I could be totally wrong about all of this, that this has come to a very, very concrete point with Gabby, and perhaps not only her, but other characters as well, where not just the honorable actions, but also the dishonorable actions and the tragedy they've witnessed can actually be a meaningful sacrifice towards something that is maybe just one step better, but better nonetheless. And interestingly and amazingly, it really will come down to the margins. You know, it'll come down to just a couple of people that shift the scales. And that's sort of the thrill of the show. You know, you never know which side it'll fall towards. What I want to believe is that it wasn't all meaningless, that the scouts didn't die in vain, that their sacrifices meant something, that Erwin was right, that the few people in the forest who can actually be adults will just push everything forward just one inch, you know, and then leave the rest of the next generation. But then I watched this episode <laughs> and Zeke's still kicking and Eren, I'm guessing, will have more power at the end of this. And I don't know what to make of that.